This is the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief, keeping you informed about the happenings in Annapolis and the area. Local news, local sports, local events, local opinion, and of course, local weather. The Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief starts now. Good morning. It's Thursday, June 27th, 2019. This is John Frenet, and this is your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. Yesterday, Senator Ben Cardin, Senator Rob Portman, Congressman Tom Cole, and Congresswoman Grace Napolitano stood at the National Press Club and announced the launch of the Fallen Journalist Memorial Foundation. Those lawmakers have introduced legislation that will authorize the Fallen Journalist Memorial Foundation to begin work on a memorial to be built at the National Mall in Washington, D.C. The Fallen Journalist Memorial Foundation was announced on Sunday to honor reporters and photojournalists who have been killed on the job, and this comes from the Tribune Publishing Company chairman, David Dreyer. Now, federal legislation does have to be passed before work on the memorial can begin, and it's estimated to take seven years to fund, plan, and build the memorial. It's also going to take millions of dollars to do that. All of that will be private. There will be no tax money used on the project. And when they announced the project, they did say that the initial funding would be coming from the Annenberg Foundation, as well as the Michael and Jackie Farrow Foundation. And Michael Farrow is the former chairman of Tribune Publishing Company. If you want to find out more information, head on over to fallenjournalists.org. Phil Davis of the Baltimore Sun had an interesting article about an Anne Arundel woman pleading guilty to harboring illegal immigrants. Apparently, Shingaizo Nicaro, 50, of Arnold, pleaded guilty to unlawful employment of aliens in Baltimore Federal Court on Tuesday. The charges say that she exploited the victim for at least $150,000 worth of unpaid housework over a period of eight years. Nicairo's relative helped the immigrant come to the United States on a tourist visa in August of 2006, and when that visa expired, Nicairo continued to employ her in her home. From August of 2006 through September of 2014, she employed her in the home doing household domestic chores, babysitting, and preparing meals. She did admit she knew that the visa had expired and that she was not eligible to live and work in the United States, and the documents say that she did not pay her adequate wages in accordance with the Fair Labor Standards Act, therefore owing at least $150,000 in back wages and overtime. Now, while that situation is absolutely horrible, I'm not sure about the math that works out. I did take a look at what the minimum wage was during that period, and based on a minimum wage job throughout those years, the total earned would have only been $118,000. As we speak, there are about 1,200 men and women that are reporting to Alumni Hall at the Naval Academy. They are here for I-Day, or Induction Day. These incoming plebes, which are freshmen, will say goodbye to their families a little bit later on today and be processed through various stations inside Alumni Hall to become members of the Naval Academy's Class of 2023. The day is going to culminate with the Oath of Office ceremony at 6 p.m. at Tecumseh Court. And if you've never seen that, come on out and see it. It is open to the public. You're going to need the ID to get onto the yard and everything else there. But after the ceremony, the plebes will meet with their families one last time for about 15 minutes until Parents Weekend, August 8th through 11th. We will be there throughout the day, so you want to stay tuned for our coverage on that. And keep in mind that with 1,200 new, emphasis on the word new, plebes, come parents, grandparents, siblings, boy and girlfriends. So please, have a little bit of patience. They're only going to be here for a few days, and then they will be gone. Speaking of being gone, more than a million Marylanders are going to travel for the long 4th of July weekend, setting a new record according to AAA Mid-Atlantic. The estimate is up 3.8% from 2018, and they say that nearly 900,000 Marylanders are going to be taking the car, 80,000 will take to the skies, and the remaining 5% will use what they call other modes of transportation, which I assume mean trains, boats, bikes, rickshaws, skateboards, segways, or hang gliders. And if you are out on the road and you travel Route 450 between Annapolis and Crofton, now not on the 4th of July weekend, but be aware that there will be some detours in effect. The State Highway Administration, in an effort to upgrade the aging culverts and, yay, reduce flooding issues in the area, are going to be closing down Route 450, which is Defense Highway, between the Crownsville Road slash South Haven Road intersection, which has the traffic light there, and the Ridges Gateway in Crownsville. Although I don't see that that's Crownsville, but I guess maybe by some jurisdiction it is. 
They are going to complete the work over two weekends. They will be closing Maryland 450 on Friday, June 28th. That is this week at 11.45 p.m. And that will remain closed through Monday, July 1st at 5 a.m. They're going to do the same thing again on Friday, July 12th, and they will reopen it again on Monday, July 15th. The detour that will be in place will be a horrible one. It'll be 5301 and Route 424. That does it for the top news today. Please make sure you're checking back on ionanapolis.net throughout the day because we do update it throughout the day, and we will have coverage of iDay. It is Thursday. We have Trevor with your Annapolis Makerspace Maker Minutes. We've got George Young with your local DMV weather forecast. And all of that is coming up in just one minute. Have you ever been to the Annapolis Mall when it opens for the day? Maybe you've noticed the line of folks waiting to get into the Apple Store. As you may know, I'm a Mac user, and today's episode of the Daily News Brief, in fact, all of the episodes of the Daily News Brief have been produced right here on my Mac computer. What you might not know about is MacMedics. They were founded here in Annapolis in 1989, and they are an Apple-authorized premium service provider, the only one in the Baltimore, Annapolis, D.C. area. And what that means to you is that they repair all Apple devices, including the iPhone screens and batteries, all without an appointment. And most repairs are done the same day usually within two hours. They also sell everything except the iPhone and the watch for the same price as Apple. I don't know why you would go anywhere else. Give them a call at 410-757-MACS, or if you're not into the whole letter thing, 410-757-6227. Stop by their retail store in Severna Park on Benfield Road or their service center in Lanham, right off of Route 50. Or you can always check them out online at macmedics.com. I'll tell you, they've saved me quite a few times, and I know they can save you. Going out? You need the most up-to-date local weather. Here's George Young from DMV Weather in Annapolis with today's forecast. Hey everyone, this is George with DMV Weather, and this is your Eye on Annapolis forecast for Thursday, June 27th. It has been a pretty warm week so far for the Annapolis region, but today through Saturday, if not all the way through Sunday, will likely be a few degrees warmer with hot readings each day, likely in the 90 to 97 degree range, with only a slight chance of some showers and thunderstorms over the weekend period. And while it might be just under 90 on Sunday and Monday, more 90s are expected next week as we head into July. Okay, that's it for today. This is George Young of DMV Weather. Make it a great day out there. Be sure to get our free app on all of your devices by searching for DCMDVA Weather in the Apple or Google App Stores. And also follow us on Facebook and Twitter and on our website at dmvweather.com so you can always stay weather informed. There is a diamond of diamonds. It's from De Beers. Only 14 diamond tears in the world can touch them. Its name, Forevermark. And Zach Reeves is the only jeweler in the Annapolis area that has it. Not only is it beautiful and rare, it has a story, supporting women in diamond-producing areas around the world. So when you give a Forevermark diamond, you don't just give, you give back. Zachary's in Forevermark, a jeweler and a jewel. Online at Zachary'sJewelers.com. Every week, makers, crafters, and educators hold events all over the area. Highlighting some of those, here's our Makers Minute, brought to you by Annapolis Makerspace. Hey, this is Trevor from Annapolis Makerspace with this week's Maker Minutes. Tonight at the Jug Bay Wetland Sanctuary is Get Wild, Project Wild Training Workshop. For parents, teachers, scout leaders, and any other educators looking for creative ways to engage children in hands-on nature-based learning, Project Wild is an interdisciplinary conservation and environmental education program emphasizing wildlife and the environment. On Saturday at Sandy Point State Park is Dip into Water Ecology. Use a dip net to see what interesting creatures you can find in the bay, as well as discussing water ecology and the health of the bay. And on Sunday at Sandy Point is the Marsh Paddle Tour. Join the park naturalist for a canoe or kayak paddle around Mesic Pond in Marsh. The park will provide the boats, paddles, and PFDs, or you can bring your own. And now through July 19th, the Circle Gallery at State Circle presents their Eye of the Beholder exhibition. Presented by the Maryland Federation of Art, Eye of the Beholder will showcase fine art, both 2D and 3D, constructed of one or more found objects. Tomorrow at Whole Foods in Annapolis is recipes from the Italian island Pentelaria. Chef Alba Johnson will teach you about the taste and flavors of the small volcanic island that sits between Sicily and Africa. This weekend at Local by Design, check out their monthly 
Indianapolis Artisans Market at their studios on Margaret Avenue in the Annapolis Design District. Check out the artist studios and works and buy some fun art. This week at Art Farm in Annapolis, tonight is Pop-Up Cinema, LGBTQ edition. Join the Annapolis Indie Film Club June screening at an Art Farm and celebrate Pride by watching a selection of short films that showcase the LGBTQ plus themes, performers, and filmmakers. This is the first in a series of short film showcases Art Farm will be doing. Also at Art Farm on Saturday morning, they have their natural light photography workshop for adults. Learn about using natural light in your photography. Embrace the good, the bad, the bright, the harsh, the evening, and even the dim lighting. And learn how to tame it to improve your photography. And Saturday evening is 615 Showcase and Wellness Event for Adults, featuring live music, art, vendors, and a catered dinner to raise money for suicide prevention and mental health awareness. And finally at Art Farm, Monday through Wednesday of next week is a mini animation summer camp for kids ages 11 through 15. Learn how to create traditional, hand-drawn animation with a digital twist. Explore foundational animation techniques such as squash and stretch, follow-through, and overlapping action, as well as learning how to set up your storytelling by creating pitches, storyboards, and animatics. At Maryland Hall this week, tonight is a free gallery reception and open studios to celebrate the newest exhibits, including Weather on the Water, works by the Annapolis Arts Alliance, The Botanical Portrait, A Personal Look into the Life of a Plant by Hai Wu Shin, as well as The Shape of My Heart, a Han Mi Artist Association group exhibition. Meet the artists and enjoy some wine and cheese and other light food and beverages. And tomorrow is Hope and Remember. It's an annual community gathering. On the one-year anniversary of the Capitol Gazette tragedy, remember Gerald Fishman, Rob Hyacin, Rebecca Smith, and Wendy Winter through music, art, and spoken testimonies, as well as a post-event candlelight illuminate. Next week at Clay Bakers in Annapolis, you have their Art Rages Summer Camp. Under the Big Top, campers will create fun projects ranging from pottery painting, glass fusing, clay sculpting, tie-dye, and mosaic. And at the Anne Arundel County Public Library System this week, today at Rivera Beach is VR Expedition in Space. Explore the galaxy without leaving the Earth for elementary school stems. Also today at the Deal Library is their coding club. Learn how to program video games and other fun interactive projects using the simple Scratch programming language. And Saturday at the Severn Library is the Apollo Museum Escape Room. The evil Dr. Pluto has wrecked the Apollo Museum of History, and you have to find clues and solve puzzles in order to put the exhibit back in order. For ages 10 and up, next week at the Pongo's Learning Lab and Coder Kids Club, they're having their gross, messy, and fun science summer camp. This camp is gross, messy, and, you guessed it, fun. Kids will make sticky, slimy, fizzy, and fluffy stuff out of everyday materials. Also next week, they're having a digital photography summer camp for grades 6 through 12. Kids will learn how to compose their photographs, use lighting, and adjust settings on their cameras or devices with local photographer Megan Martineau, a Punny Bee photographer. Cameras will be available to borrow, but kids are welcome to bring their own cameras or devices as well. And next week at Annapolis Makerspace, on Monday, our electronics class with Scott continues. On Tuesday, we have our monthly Autodesk Fusion 360 3D design workshop, and while our regular woodworking night on Wednesday is still on, since Thursday is July 4th, we're going to skip Electronics Night next week. If you have any questions about Annapolis Makerspace or the Maker Minutes or any of these events, feel free to contact me at trevor at makeannapolis.org, and you can catch me tonight and most Thursday nights at Annapolis Makerspace on Renard Court for Electronics Night, and you can find links to all of these events at the Annapolis Makerspace website at makeannapolis.org. And whether you're making art, software, sawdust, or just a mess, chances are you're already a maker. This has been Trevor from Annapolis Annapolis Makerspace with this week's Maker Minute. Did you know that you could potentially save hundreds of dollars a year by using a smart thermostat that you can install yourself? Or that a smart light bulb can help you sleep better? I'm Richard Gunther. I live here in the Annapolis area, and I'm the host of the Home On podcast from the Digital Media Zone. I'm joined in each episode by a different guest co-host featuring some of the biggest names in the smart home space, including journalists, technologists, and leaders or founders of companies like Ring, Ikea, Lifex, and more. You'll learn about smart home products you can purchase and set up yourself to turn your own home into a smart home. Find Home On in your favorite podcast app on Spotify or on the web. Just search for Home On in your app of choice or in Google. You could do it right now while you're listening. Add Home On to your podcast lineup and learn how to make your home smarter. You've been listening to the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. Tell your friends and colleagues this is the podcast where you can keep up on the latest with what's going on in Annapolis. And also tell them about our website, ionanapolis.net, where you can find even more information. This podcast comes to you every Monday through Friday at 7 a.m., keeping you informed with the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. And take a moment to listen to our other podcast, The Maryland Crabs, released every Thursday at noon.